Today we're going to look at three game-changing updates that just came out for Negative Lab Pro that bring major improvements for film photographers, whether you shoot slide film or negative film. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now before we get to testing the improvements, I'd like to go over the patch notes first. Our headline note is a new color process. As noted in the article here, the classic color process was prone to creating hues in the shadows and highlights, while the new refined process generates a more neutral image overall. Both options are still available in Negative Lab Pro should you prefer the old process, and you can switch between them at will. Here's an example image from the article. On the left side here, you can see the classic version of the color process, but if we move the slider over here, this is the new refined version. If you pay close attention to the shadows on the left side, you can see that there's a cooler tone to them, while on the right side is a warm warmer overall tone that looks more natural. Our next note in the article here is the ability for Negative Lab Pro to now process positive slide images. This wasn't possible before, as Negative Lab Pro was only designed to handle negatives. This means that if you shoot positive slide film, you can now use the Negative Lab Pro settings to process your image. Naturally, of course, this also means that you can now process photos shot on a digital camera as well. On the left side is the raw image directly out of the digital camera, and on the right side is after some processing is done in Negative Lab Pro. And the final major update to the software are points 4 and 6, which is a dramatic improvement to the performance of the overall software. It's much more memory optimized and no longer requires Rosetta in order to run on Apple Silicon Macs. This means that if you're doing a bulk process on an entire roll of film, it should process much faster than it did before. Alright, so in this Lightroom collection, I have all my photos along with duplicate copies. The original files are using the new color science, while the virtual copies are using the classic color science. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and pick out some comparisons where you can actually notice a difference. There are some photos here where you can't really see a difference, so we're going to skip over those ones. Alright, our first photo here is number 12. Using the classic color science, you can see that the image overall has a purple hue in the shadows to it. However, if we switch over to the new color science, it balances that out with some green. This is our next photo, so the original photo here actually has a little bit of a green tinge to it. However, if we switch over to the new color science model, it does the opposite of what it did with the previous photo and it adds some purple in, which balances out the image more. The same thing goes on here in the pavement. Pay close attention. In the first photo, the pavement has kind of a green tone to it. However, in the second photo, it balances it out and creates a more neutral looking image. These examples were definitely marginal, but having more accurate colors in your photos is always a welcome change. Alright, and the final and what I think is the biggest change is the ability to finally process positive files in Negative Lab Pro. Here I have a roll of Velvia 100 slide film that I shot in Banff late last year. As you can see, the images are very cool and dark, and they definitely need some correction applied to them. So let's see what the new version of Negative Lab Pro can do for us. First I'm going to select all of my files and do Ctrl N. I'm going to specify them as positive files, view scan, basic, level 3 default, and a 20% border buffer with role analysis selected. Let's click analyze. Alright, we'll uncheck make a copy and click apply. Alright, so it doesn't look like it did too much for us and I'm noticing something weird. If we do Ctrl N on our first photo here and then click reset on the settings, then click apply, You'll notice that it all of a sudden fixes the image, so I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the settings. It, let's, let's go over to the next one here, Control N. If we click Reset, I'm not noticing any settings change, and yet the image comes out much more balanced. So I'm really not sure what's going on. Maybe it's something hidden inside of the colors here. Nope, I don't see anything in there. Tone profile stays linear. Hmm. So it seems like there might be possibly a bug in the software. Okay, so from the little bit of snooping that I've done in the settings here, I think I found the optimal settings. If you do Control N, you click Reset, then come into White Balance and set Auto Neutral, and then click Apply. It seems to give you a very nice looking neutral image that you could start editing in Lightroom if you wanted to. Of course, you can always open the settings panel back up and you can make your changes in Negative Lab Pro if you prefer, but my personal preference is to make my changes in Lightroom itself. So with that in mind, we'll go into the Develop tab, increase the brightness here, bring down the highlights, bring up our shadows a bit, Maybe bring a little bit of purple back into the image. Apply a 4x6 crop. Maybe a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of clarity. Maybe bring up the shadows a bit more. 
and from there I'd say we have a pretty nice looking photo. Let's try another one. Alright, here we have a picture of my friend's 911. So if we do Control N, click Reset, set to Auto Neutral, maybe bring up the exposure a bit here, click Apply, go into Develop, bring up the exposure some more, bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights, bring in a bit of dehaze, a little bit of clarity, a little bit more warmth, come into the lens correction, do a little bit to reverse the vignetting, apply a 4x6 crop. Now the pavement definitely has a little bit of a red or magenta hue to it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control N, I'm going to come into my shadows here, and I'm going to cool them down a bit. Alright, there we go. There's the before, and there's the after. So I think it's safe to say that these are some pretty good changes for Negative Lab Pro. Mac users can now run the software more efficiently on their MacBooks, which will lead to better performance on Macs configured with less memory, such as the baseline 8GB models or newer baseline 16GB models, and also longer battery life now that it doesn't have to go through the Rosetta translation layer. Improved color science, while it did end up being a minor change, is still a welcome addition, and it's awesome seeing the ability to switch between the classic and the newer modes, and then having the ability to use Negative Lab Pro to do corrections for your slide film as well is an awesome added benefit. If you learned something from this video or simply enjoyed it, maybe consider joining our community by subscribing to the channel and leave a comment down below letting me know what you learned. And I'll see you in my next video.